think that people or athletes especially understand that the, the human performance aspect of it, like just because you're getting better at something away from the baseball field doesn't mean it's not going to help you play baseball, mm -hmm. right? Like if, if I'm going to, if I'm going to go out and just read a book, like reading that book and staying focused on that book as long as I can and being in the moment and present and understanding everything that I can, that's going to translate to the field. Also yeah. my, my, um, you know, my focus, my concentration, uh, my ability to stay calm, things like that. And, and just like, um, so like a lot of guys are like, why, why do you do the cold tub so much? Like, yeah. what is the reason you, you get in the cold tub? I'm like, well, it's not because, you know, it helps me recover. Like, I think the number one reason is if I can approach the cold tub, like I want to approach the rest of my life, calm, under control, uh, you know, slow breath. If I can approach the, the 38 degree cold tub that way, yeah. then that's how I'm going to approach everything else in my life. Mm -hmm. And so if I can come to the field every day and I can be in a big situation in the ninth inning and I can have 72 uh, heart rate yeah. and be calm, you know, then that's the goal. So yeah. the, that things like that completely translate to playing sports. And I think a lot of times coming back to your original question is, you know, people get too specialized. They yeah. think that if I'm not practicing this specific sport, then I'm not going to improve in that sport. I think that you're spot on where you need to just have overall human. Performance. How have you learned over the years? And it's a subjective question because it's just how you perceive it. But how have you learned how to control your thinking? Uh, with so many different voices and egos in a room, yours included. Yeah. You know, I think that um, it's probably, I've probably fall back a lot on just like trusting my gut, mm -hmm. trusting my instinct and going, you know, like I'll definitely try a lot of different things and talk to everyone about it and talk to, yeah. you know, anyone that, anyone that I think may have something um, helpful. Sure. I'll definitely talk to them and, you know, listen to what they have to say, and then I'll try it. And if, if something just doesn't feel right, then I'm probably just going to go back, um, you know, and say thank you. And it, you know, didn't work out or just try what they did and it didn't work and then move on from that. But I think that a lot of people don't really uh, trust that about themselves. I think that they second guess themselves and they've almost lost touch with that part of their, you know, their thinking is yeah. like, they, they've gone so far in the other direction where they don't even know what their own trust in their own instinct. Do you think is. that we've gotten away from that own sense of self or that own intuitive or own naturistic feel because we have such access to answers that are outside of us? Yeah. I mean, I, I think without a doubt we have. And I, the example that I can use is like now if we're hitting like at the mm -hmm. field and everything's measured uh, offensively. Yeah. And so if you're hitting at the field and, they got the hit tracks on and you're like, Oh man, you like you, you're in BP and you hit one. And you're like, Oh man, that was nice. That yeah. felt really good. Swing felt great. And then you look at the hit tracks, you're like, Oh, your exit velocity was down. And, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a good launch angle and, yeah. um, your bat speed wasn't what it normally is. You're like, well, you know, now you're second guessing yourself, yeah. you're like, but, but I thought that was, you know, in my head, that was a really good swing. And I feel like that swing will translate to the game, sure. but, but this, you know, the hit tracks just told me that all my numbers are off, so I must have to change something. And I think that that's something that, w that is constantly, um, for me, especially now that I'm the old guy, is like yeah. I'm constantly fight I'm constantly fighting the technology. Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to use it to my advantage, but right. also not let it overtake what I know I've already learned uh, in the last 20 years. And, and so I think that's something that um, guys yeah. have to balance are outside of your control and you've already touched on it, but specifically in that, in that category. Right. Well, I got one specific experience. I remember, um, 2012, I was in Lehigh Valley and I was in AAA and July 31st, we traded for a catcher. And so I was basically out of playing time. Yeah. So the Phillies has traded me to the blue Jays. So okay. I was with the blue Jays for one month. And that's when I became a free agent after that. But uh, while I was with the Blue Jays, we were in 
uh, Tacoma playing, and I, I read a story about the backup double-A catcher for the Phillies had just gotten called up <laughs> because multiple catchers in the big leagues got hurt. Come on. And so, so had I been there, and I would have been called up in August yeah. with Philadelphia. And so I like, I was by myself. I remember this like clear as day. I was by myself. I had just gotten breakfast and yeah. I was just walking down the street and I just had an absolute meltdown. Oh, like, I bet. I bet. By myself, emotional meltdown, um, like crying, yeah. like didn't understand why, you know, like it had been a long time in eight years and I never gotten called up wow. and I just got traded. I thought I was going to a better, a better position, you know, and, a better team. Yeah. And then it, I turn around and look at this thing and it's like, I got absolutely screwed, Yeah. you know, but I, I got over that as just, you know, just a, a momentary thing. And then I played that night and I was fine. And, but the, the reason I bring that up is like, I didn't have the tools at that time to understand, like, that's not, that wasn't in my control mm. whatsoever, you know, like that was not in my control at all. Like, and you don't know, this is like, this is some Buddhist stuff right here, but like nothing is good or bad. Right. Like our, our perception of, of an event is what makes it good or bad, right? right. The event is just what it is. Yeah. It's just, you, you judge whether or not it's good or bad. Yeah. So, so it ended up the next year because I had been with Toronto and I had played really well in AAA that Arizona had seen me and signed me that fall, Okay. which gave me the opportunity to be a Diamondback, right? So looking back on it, what I thought was something that was terrible ends up being... turned out to be something really good. Yeah. But at, the, but at the time, it looked like absolute, you know, worst thing that could ever happen. And so that's uh, one, I didn't have the tools wow. to deal with it at the time about being in my control, like, and also the fact that like that event just is the event and you don't know whether it's good or bad um, until later down the road.